So basically we got a bunch of photos. I'd like a quick peek at them, but I have not edited any of these yet. We're gonna give Sam 60 seconds to edit the photo that he's only very lightly seen. One minute, go. Okay, here we go. So how do I do it? I feel like all of our videos lately are doing this. Just a little Casey Neistat zoom. What's up guys, hope your week is going well. We've had a bunch of requests over the last couple months to make lessons more affordable. We know that a bunch of you guys are at home cooped up uh, and this is like a great time to learn and get into learning new tools and editing techniques and filmmaking and a bunch of creative stuff. So we are doing something very cool. We listened, introducing summer school, but kind of the cool kind. So this is what's up. For the next month, we're discounting all of our lessons. So if you purchase one, it'll be about 25% off. If you purchase two, it'll be 30% off. We're also discounting our MIF workshop, which is really cool. MIF is our annual film festival, all shot on mobile. We're doing something really cool this year. We've got five professionals who are gonna film over eight hours of content, uh, sharing some of their favorite filmmaking techniques, tricks. We're talking about pre-production, audio, all sorts of stuff. Um, yeah, there's like eight hours of content there. We're also doing live Q and A, so definitely check that out. Links to all that stuff will be down below. So here in a bit, I'm gonna jump in the car and head over and meet up with Sam Elkins. Uh, we now have two lessons with Sam and I helped shoot one of them earlier this year, which was super fun. Um, so we're gonna go get some tips and tricks from him. I'm gonna give him a 60 second edit challenge, which should be pretty fun. Uh, but before we go into that, I kind of want to briefly talk a little bit about the lessons so far and uh, yeah, just kind of tell you guys about them and what I thought was interesting and what hopefully uh, might be useful to you guys. All right, so the last six months of Lessons at Moment. Um, in the fall last year, Niles went to Iceland with Andrew Kearns. He did an incredible lesson there on how to pose models, um, how to shoot incredible landscape photos. I mean. Uh, Kearns is on the team now, the dude's a rock star. Um, we also went to Japan, Niles went to Japan and filmed with Jesse Driftwood, who's a legend. He also filmed with um, Natasha, who's also incredible. Jesse Driftwood, I would check out if you guys are into transitions, if you're into trying to up your game on Instagram stories. Um, the dude is a legend and he doesn't really need me to introduce him. Uh, Natasha is incredible um, at doing fashion photography. She's also amazing at color and editing. Um, if you've seen her Instagram account, she's absolutely mind-blowing. I cannot believe how talented this girl is. So definitely go check that out. Uh, yeah, where else did we go? We also went to Norway and we filmed with Joel Hipponen and Max Chestnut. Joel did a lesson on how to shoot with brands. Um, we went to one of the most beautiful locations in Norway. We landed and went out to the middle of nowhere. Um, it was so, so pretty. It was incredible. Uh, the location just provided an amazing backdrop for the lesson and for a lot of the photos that Joel took. Um, and he talked about how to work with brands, um, how to create spec pieces, pitch decks, all that stuff. So definitely go check that out if you are into or trying to get more into brand work, trying to make money from um, photography. Joel's lesson is where it's at. Um, we also did one with Max Chestnut on drone photography. If you guys have purchased a Mavic Air 2 recently, um, or which is definitely the best one to, to grab uh, with Max's lesson because it's a rock star drone for photography. But um, yeah, we, we shot with Max. I mean, we went to some of the most crazy locations with Max of all time. It was absolutely incredible. Um, so, so stoked on that lesson. That was so fun. Uh, both of those guys were fun. Niles and I were there for like a week shooting both of those and it was really, really cold, but it was just uh, so beautiful and cinematic and yeah, really stoked on those two pieces. Earlier this year, we shot in California, loudest truck in the world. Uh, earlier this year, we did a lesson with, um, one of two lessons with uh, Sam Elkins, who I'm going to meet up with here in a bit. We also shot a lesson with Andy Tu in Japan, which was super, super fun. Um, I did that one with Andrew Kearns and it was, um, yeah, it was incredible. Japan is such a beautiful uh, photographic place, so that lended itself super well to what we were trying to shoot. Um, so yeah, if you wanna check out that lesson, you're gonna get basically a trip through Japan, seeing snow monkeys, um, samurais, all sorts of stuff, and you're gonna learn as well. So um, just incredible what some of these creatives can do with a um, iPhone, whether it's Sam for photography or whether it's Andy Tu for filmmaking, those two are, um, yeah, super, super cool and worth checking out. All right, so I'm gonna hop in the car now. Let's go head over and meet up with Sam.
All right, so this is my local coffee shop. Has the best breakfast burritos and Mike's never had it, so first taste Here burrito. we go. Oh. Oh yeah. Dude, that's so good. So, so good. good. Dude, pork shoulder. this is the pork shoulder one. I'm into it, man. I fully approve. This is the best way to start an editing session. I'll either want to be creative or I want to go to sleep. <laughs> High security. Just to knock out a little intro here. It looks really good if you stand like, stand like. Right in here? No, like. Actually, I'm not that actually. Here, pretty fun. I want to ride to Santa Monica though. I think, I've heard that's like a pretty fun ride for me. Yeah, this thing is well, yeah. Yeah, it's like a, it's a fun little, uh, just fix, fix here. Which is pretty, pretty nice. All right, I'm gonna hijack Sam's audio and we're gonna use this light for this little video because I'm just filming on my 6600. So basically we got a bunch of photos, not a bunch, like five photos in what, a folder yep. on the computer. I, I had like a quick peek at them, but I have not edited any of these yet. We're gonna give Sam 60 seconds to edit the photo that he's only very lightly seen. So uh, Let's see yeah, how dude, does. all right. So first things first, let's import and then we'll get going. I'll we have a portrait here, we have a landscape shot from you, and then a couple travel photos. Perfect. So All right, dude. Start with the portrait. Ready for photo number one? Let's do it. Portrait shot. You have one minute, go. Okay, here we go. So, highlights down, shadows up, blacks. You wanna watch out for skin tones with this too, just cause lower the contrast. It's actually kind of a lot of pressure. <laughs> 40 keep, seconds. Keep that profile the same. Looks like we need to up the saturation. We got that luminance. Uh, Midtones. Need some, some decent grain reduction and profile corrections. 15 seconds. Seconds. Ooh, this is actually challenging. Come on, move before and after. Okay, oh, pretty happy with that. Done. Up. <laughs> Done. Nice, dude. Very cool. Simple. I mean, yeah. I, I probably, if I had more time, I probably would have messed with the skin tones a bit more. Nice. Yeah, it just do that real quick. Bring the exposure down. But for the most part, yeah, I like the. What are the uh, so like? What are the initial things that are you think that somebody should like if they're starting to work on a photo? What are the first things you went to? Uh, I would start. I didn't start with this photo, but I would normally start with the tone curve. I think okay. the tone curve is kind of the base for everything because yeah. you can control so much with the photo. You know, like cool. even if I drag up, like you, know, yeah. you can just do so much with it. So um, you're, you're hitting the tone curve before you're playing around with the highlight typ shadows. And typically, yeah, because this is more finer adjustment stuff. Like this is going to affect the entire image. Cool. So you know, and typically, like you want. Like, you know, there's kind of a golden rule of like a, something similar to like a kind of a makeshift S yeah. almost, you know? Yeah, yeah. But, That's you know, you want to watch and see, you know, obviously the shadows here, like, and then you can adjust as you know, totally. as needed, but yeah. And then I would, I would go in here and then, obviously if I had more time, I'd mess around much more with the HSL, but totally. I just very quickly brought down the, I uh, brought up the saturation, brought down the luminous of the shirt, just cause I wanted to pop a little bit more. And cool. Probably would have added a little bit of warmth to the shadows, just a little bit, but nice. overall, yeah, pretty happy. All right, dude, photo number two. 60 seconds starts now. Okay. So, you know, Canon, Canon uh, lenses vignettes so much, so you gotta watch out for that. Ah. I've just, uh, this is something I've always noticed with them. Also, we're gonna keep this kind of flat because I, I really like the colors, but the HSO, I'm going to miss. So I love this color picker tool because you can up the saturation of a particular color. I just love the, the soft orange hues, you know? Mm -hmm. it's nice. Bring down the luminance as well on the oranges so you can see a little bit better. I'm going to crop this it's a little wide. And five seconds. Going for that pastel kind of look here. Nice. So you're mostly playing with the exposure and lightly with the colors. Yeah, because I mean, I think good photos are good photos even even before you edit them, you know? Like editing yeah. should just be kind of supplementary in my opinion. Thanks. Also, show the hues. All right. And we're done. Seconds. Nice, dude. Not bad. Cool. So, we 
You got a before oh, and yeah. after here. Totally. Not terrible. I mean, we, we just kind of made the gradient in the sky stand out a little bit more. Cool. I really love kind of pastel colors, and I think yeah. there's a nice orange light. I mean, it's like a classic Washington color. I'm assuming. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like that really kind of pastel looking sunset, nice, nice oranges, and yeah, overall just like nice. Nice whites to mess around with as well. They're kind of sure. they got this like kind of warm hue to them like mm -hmm. even before we started editing. Um, but you know you just want to try to bring that out as much as you can. And then we also just quickly cropped this as well. It's nice to shoot wide, especially with cameras nowadays. You have a lot of room to crop. Sure. So you know just mess around and see see what kind of crop you like looks the best. I just cropped because I didn't really want that part in there. Totally. But for the most part, yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. Three of four. Next pick. This pick looks like it's going to be a little bit trickier to to edit. It's yeah. Be dark. Yeah, we got some good information though. So okay, all right. He's not scared. We're good. All right, one minute, go for it. Okay, noticing the color or the white balance in my, I like warmer photos, so I'm gonna adjust that a bit. Also, as you bring this up, you want to be wary of... So this is also a TIFF file, so we're not going to be able to add profile corrections naturally. So what I'm going to do quickly, obviously because we only have 60 seconds, is we're going to do a custom. Sorry. Uh, do a manual selection here. And we can, you can mess around with the distortion just ever so slightly. What I really want to watch out for is the vignetting on the bottom. I'm going to crop. Crop this in just a little bit. 20 seconds. Cool. And then I'm noticing the tint is a little off. I'm bring it a little bit more green. And then we gotta, now we gotta make, some, make up some time here. What a nice clean edit. I'm noticing that there's a decent amount of grain here. some sharpening. It helps to sharpen and add noise reduction at the same time just because they kind of cancel each other out. But yeah, looks pretty pretty good. Done. Uh, nice, dude. All right, we got one more here. All right, and then we're a very own Natalie Allen. Yeah, this one's nice. Looks like Mexico probably. Three, go. Go. So the auto angle tool is actually pretty good. Like, see, we just clicked it. It looks oh, yeah. just straight through right out. So save some time there. Again, we're adding a TIFF, so we're not going to have nearly as much information here. But that should be okay. You gotta be careful when you're adjusting white balance with JPEG photos. It gets kind of like you gotta be careful. It's really easy to overdo it. Um, the greens, I want to make them less warm, so we're gonna go ahead and here and make them a little bit more cool. We're gonna bring down the saturation. Um, so in here, so you have multiple different options with the tone curve here. You can adjust by region, or you can also yeah. just adjust like the, the, yeah. the two different things. But I want to. The midtones here are, are gonna, what's going to affect the entire image for the most part. And then we can go back and bring down like some of the lighter tones. Yeah, I'm noticing a similar theme you do with the, the tone curve each time. It's kind of a similar, yeah. kind of just a nice curve. Very similar, yeah. yeah. And like you just kind of mess around, see what what looks the best, what looks the most natural. And I mean, so far so good. I would say I really love this kind of terracotta color. Mm -hmm. So we're going to emphasize that by bringing up the saturation. And then also bring down the luminance. It's nice when you don't have skin tones to work with because you can adjust this and you don't have to worry about it affecting skin tones. But uh. if you have a person in the photo, don't edit luminance or saturation this way. Okay. Also, this is kind of off color to me, so I'm probably actually going to crop that. But I really like, let's see the problem is, we we'll probably do a four by five crop. That's kind of my go-to. That looks a little bit better. Nice. I just don't. That, doesn't really add a lot to the image to yeah. me. But you can always, I mean, the nice thing about cropping is you can always, even if you wanted to, you could just create a virtual copy here. And then all of a sudden, now you got two images to work with. Maybe one is that crop, and then the other is like ah, an original crop here. That's cool. Yeah, so, you know, do whatever you'd like, but i say that's pretty good. Nice, dude. Quick before and after. Yeah, super simple, but like, again, like, you really want to just emphasize the colors that are actually there. Um, I think it's really important to get the raw file right in yeah. camera and then it's going to make your job a lot easier so you're not yeah. trying to fix stuff that wasn't already there or make things look a certain way like I like to keep things super natural. Totally. Yeah. Very cool. Nice easy, work. Easy does it. <laughs> Sam just crushed it. Super, super good. Um, nice dude. Yeah, I mean, why should people check out your lesson? Obviously this is a, this was a quick little deep dive here. Yeah. Um, but you did two lessons with Moment. Yep. 
first one we shot in Santa Barbara area. Yeah, with the, with uh, all about shooting iPhones, and then I recently just came up with actually a very simple yet very informative editing course. And I think why people would enjoy it is because it's not it's more about finding your style and like running with that rather than you know like just finding a style that you want to emulate. I think it's it's about like. I think with the editing course, it's much more about kind of finding your own unique style and then also trying to make your body of work look as cohesive as possible. You'll notice like even through these images that I edited, I edit a very similar way and it's a nice cohesive look to these images. So, you know, if you, if you think about it in that sense, like you want to have as cohesive of a portfolio as you possibly can. It just looks good. And, you know, from a brand's perspective, it's really going to add a lot to, you know, your potential value of your images. So, you know, so in this entire lesson, you know, I go through everything from, you know, creating your own style to understanding why I make certain adjustments. And I walk you through a couple different shoots actually that I've done in the past. I just explain why I'm making the adjustments that I do so you guys have like a nice base to, you know, tackle when you start editing your own images as well. I mean, honestly, I feel like I learned something literally just in the five minutes watching that. I'm more of a video guy, but like, yeah, it's really cool. It's What's amazing is it makes sure, I hope you guys are shooting in RAW. Like if you're shooting on your phone, um, you know, use an app like the Moment Pro Camera app that has RAW built in because there's so much more data there. Yeah. I mean, even even editing these, it was cool to see some of the photos that were JPEGs, but the RAW images, you can really push and pull highlights and shadows. and Especially with exposure too, if you underexpose or overexpose, it's really easy to bring that back when it's a RAW image versus, you know, if it's a JPEG, it's very difficult. Totally. Yeah. Nice, dude. All right, well, thanks for helping me out. No problem. Um, yeah, I guess I'm gonna bounce. Sounds good. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right. Later, dude. We shall see ya. All right, guys, I just got home. I want to say a massive shout out to Sam for helping out with this video. Um, like I said before, definitely go check out both of his lessons. He did one earlier this year on phone photography, and he also did one on editing. So um, yeah, if you liked what you saw in his quick little 60 second sessions, he obviously does a much uh, longer deep dive into editing and some of the tools he uses. So go check out his uh, lesson if you're into that. And with that, the links to summer school are down below, so go check that out and check out all the lessons. Um, yeah, I actually have to go because Niles and I are filming another lesson tomorrow. We've got a bunch of fun lessons coming up this summer and I'm super excited to share them with you guys. So um, yeah, check out summer school. You guys have a month from now. Uh, yeah, stay safe, wash your hands, and we'll see you guys soon.